Mr. Hopkins was started on short-acting octreotide, titrated up to 200 micrograms three times daily. After two weeks, he was transitioned to octreotide LAR, 30 milligrams every 28 days. 5-HIAA and chromogranin A levels dropped by 50% and his diarrhea and flushing improved significantly. Let's join Mr. Hopkins and his oncologist 18 months later during an evaluation. Well, it's been over 18 months since we first started the long-acting injections and six months ago you were still doing well. I understand from our specialist nurse that you've been having increasing problems with diarrhea and flushing and uh, your hormone levels are rising. How are you feeling? Yes, I'm having problems with diarrhea again. I see. How long ago did it start? I noticed it about two months or so ago and it's been getting worse since then. Getting worse, how? More frequent? More severe? Um, both. Until a couple of months ago, my bowel movements were almost normal. Once, twice a day. Occasionally I'd have diarrhea, but it was manageable. Now, I have to go four or five times a day, and it's almost always loose. It's not as bad as it was in the beginning, but it's starting to become a real problem at work and in my social life. Any changes in diet? Not really, no. Any unusual stress in the last two months? No. Nothing out of the ordinary. Has the flushing gotten worse? Yes, definitely. Is my cancer getting worse? Is that what it is? No. According to your scans, your cancer is still stable. However, your lab results do show an increase in urine levels of serotonin, where we measured the 24-hour urine 5-HIAA. Well, it's good news about the cancer, but why are my serotonin levels going up? Well, sometimes over time, the medication you're taking, so metastatin analogs, can become less effective. Well, is there anything I can do about it? The diarrhea is becoming a real problem again. So this is a great question because this is a, really about the practical use of somatostatin analogs and then what do you do next in the real world. First of all, let's consider somatostatin analogs. It's totally reasonable to increase the dose to every 21 days or every 14 days. But you need to be aware this type of use is not in the licensed indication. The next consideration was switching to immediate release subcutaneous octreotide injection. Again, a good suggestion, and we often uh, do this. And you can give patients booster injections of subcutaneous octreotide, for example, 200 micrograms twice or three times daily. And that tends to work well. However, patients after a while tend not to like this because of the recurrent uh, injection. And also, they feel that they get more in the way of side effects. The other option of telotrostat ethyl we'll come back to in a minute. Let's discuss answer D in terms of lutetium-177 dota octreotate or the other molecular targeted agent Everolimus. For lutetium-177 dota octreotate therapy, that's been shown to be beneficial in the NETA-1 study for its anti-tumor effect in patients with mid-gut neuroendocrine tumors who had carcinoid uh, syndrome. And they showed a definite benefit in terms of the anti-tumor properties. And there was also a suggestion of overall survival benefit. The data for Everolimus in this situation is not so clear cut. We have from the RADIANT studies, and most recently the RADIANT-4 study, the benefit of Everolimus in gastroenteropancreatic uh, neuroendocrine tumors as an anti-tumor agent. 
It's not clear that there's benefits of Everolimus in patients with carcinoid syndrome. Hepatic artery embolization is also a good option. It's used in effect for debulking tumor burden. You have to be careful, however, to ensure that one, the um, tumors within the livers are arterialized. If you have hypovascular or poorly arterialized tumors, then embolization doesn't work so well. And if you are going to perform hepatic artery embolization in patients with carcinoid syndrome, you need to be sure that they're covered for a carcinoid crisis. And that means these patients need to be on intravenous octreotide. I would tend to put them on 50 micrograms per hour, starting a couple of hours before the procedure and, for, and continuing for 24 to 48 hours after the procedure. Occasionally, uh, the other option that might be considered is debulking surgery. But let's go back to option C, which is prescribed to Lotrostat Ethel. This is an interesting option. It's a new possibility that we have for patients with carcinoid syndrome. The Lotrostat has recently been licensed at the dose of 250 milligrams, given three times daily. And the appeal of it is that it's given as an oral medication. Its use in this, situ in this situation would be for patients who have diarrhea, usually more than four times daily, and elevated 24-hour urine 5-HIAA. In the recent uh, papers, it's been shown that at this dose and for these indications, telotrocyte provides significant benefit um, for patients with carcinoid syndrome, particularly reducing their diarrhea. How does it work? Well, telotrostat um, ethyl is a tryptophan hydroxylase inhibitor, and therefore that inhibits the metabolic pathway of serotonin. And thus, by taking the drug telotrostat ethyl, you inhibit the pathway, reduce serotonin levels, reduce the 24-hour urine 5-HIA, and reduce the carcinoid syndrome. This drug is very well tolerated. Occasionally, you have side effects that can be associated, but these tend not to be severe. Sometimes liver function tests go up. If that goes more than two or three times normal, then you might need to consider stopping the medication for a period of time. Other symptoms that can be associated include abdominal pain and bloating and occasionally fatigue. Very occasionally you can have headaches and loss of appetite. Overall, therefore, it's, it's entirely reasonable to be considering telotristat ethyl in this situation to control the carcinoid uh, syndrome, reduce the 24-hour urine 5-HIA, reduce the diarrhea problems that this patient is having. It's well tolerated, it's oral, and usually you would see the effect within the first two to three weeks of starting the medication. And certainly if you haven't had benefit by 12 weeks, then the suggestion is that at that time you would stop that treatment and switch to another alternative. But the data looks good, it's very encouraging, and as an oral medication, I think it's something that our patients will look forward to having as part of the treatment option in treating carcinoid syndrome.